Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. This is a really nice equation and I believe we've done a similar problem, but it was a long time ago. If I can find the link, I'll link it down below. But anyways, we have this interesting cubic. Uh, first of all, why is it interesting? Because it's not in the standard form. And also we have a fraction on the right hand side, which kind of looks scary. So do you want to, as our first approach, would you like to use the cubic formula? And you're like, ooh, no way. I'm not going to use it because there's a fraction, there's a negative 2 in front of x cube. That's going to be a little messy. So we're going to be using a smart approach because obviously I know some folks are going to say, hey, this problem is contrived. It's been designed special. Yes, these are competition level problems, sort of, and most of those problems have been that way. It's just a thought process that matters. Obviously, uh, you can't apply these techniques to every problem. But anyways, let's get this done. So what would be a good strategy? I want to get rid of the fraction. Who likes fractions, right? So let's go to multiply everything by 3, 3x three minus 3x squared minus 6x cubed equals 1. Great. Now fractions are clear. And this should ring a bell. If it didn't, I want you to pay attention to 3x minus 3x squared. But we have to switch some stuff around. Let's go ahead and switch the negative 6x cubed and 1. So I'm going to keep this negative 3x squared here, the plus 3x here, bring the 1 over as a negative, and throw away the 6x cubed. I'm not throw away, but just put it on the other side. Add to both sides. Okay. Now, Take a look at the left-hand side. Doesn't that look familiar? It should. If it doesn't, then review algebra, especially uh, the binomial theorem, especially a plus minus b to the third power. In other words, perfect cubes. This is going to become a perfect cube if we do a little bit of touch. So here's what we're missing. But before I do that, let me just tell you. x minus 1 quantity cubed can be written as x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. Remember Pascal's triangle? The coefficient is 1, 3, 3, 1. But this is going to alternate. Hey, that's kind of nice because the only thing we're missing on the left-hand side is x cubed. And guess what? We can add x cubed to both sides. Let's do it. Add x cubed to both sides. So I get x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. And it kind of looks like subtracting, but we're adding because 3x squared has a negative sign. And on the right-hand side, if you add x cubed, you're going to get 7x cubed because 6x cubed plus x cubed is 7x cubed. Make sense? Okay, hopefully now this is more clear. On the left-hand side, I have a perfect cube. And that's perfect. So let's go ahead and write it as x minus 1 to the third power by the power of binomial theorem. And the right-hand side can also be written as a perfect cube. Uh, it's not that perfect, but it's okay. What we can do is we can write this as the cube root of 7 times x and then just cube it. And guess what? You get 7x cubed. Cool. Now what is so cool about writing both sides as something cubed. Well, if a cubed equals b cubed, this implies a equals b. Of course, if you're talking about real numbers, we are talking about real numbers here. If you want the complex solutions, uh, they're kind of messy, but you can definitely go that route as well. But let's find the real solution first. So, I couldn't always say this for even powers because even powers will have two conclusions. Remember the video yesterday about the a to the power ln thing? that had two results because of the even powers. But odd powers will give you this. You can cube root both sides, you're good. Okay, so here's the conclusion. x minus 1 equals the cube root of 7 times x. Hmm, that's interesting. Cube root of 7 is greater than 1, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract x from both sides to keep the coefficient of x positive, but I'm going to have a negative number on the right-hand side. Anyways, that's okay. Now we can go ahead and factor out x 
kind of like subtracting like terms. They don't like each other. One of them is a radical. But anyways, we can write this as cube root of 7 minus 1 times x equals negative 1. And from here, x equals negative 1 over cube root of 7 minus 1. Obviously, you could also write it as 1 over 1 minus cube root of 7, which some folks will probably do. The other two roots are not going to be real. But finding them, again, is a little painful. But here's what you can do. You can write uh, the difference of two cubes, factor it. You know how to factor it, hopefully, a minus b. a squared plus ab plus b squared. And set it equal to 0. This is going to give you the complex solutions. But again, they're going to be very, very messy. So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and hasta la vista.